So there's a new poll out about the support for the war, Reuters Ipsos poll. 41% of Americans say the U.S. should provide weapons to Ukraine right now. That number's going down. It was 46% in May. And it comes as the U.S. sends more than a million rounds of ammo to Ukraine that was seized from Iran. More perspective on all of this now from Aaron David Miller, senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, who joins us. Thank you for coming on. What do you what do you say about the especially about the support levels among Americans for the uh, the war effort or sending weapons to Ukraine? What does that what does that say to you? I mean, I think it's worrisome. You've got a perfect storm brewing here. You have dysfunction, obviously, in Congress. You're going to have a very close uh, uh, elect election race between Biden and presumably Donald Trump, uh, or if not Trump, uh, his avatar. And number three, you have an uh, Iranian, excuse me, a Ukrainian counteroffensive that um, has not failed, but it has not yet achieved the results that many Americans were expecting. You put all this together, uh, and it looks to me like the headline, which is now waning support for a supply of significant amounts of American military equipment to Ukrainian forces may in fact become a trend line, particularly as we enter the 2024 election season. So I think it's extremely worrisome. Part of the problem is that you've got a long war here. Yep. Um, and I think that's, uh, if, if a war lasts, interstate war lasts more than a year, it's likely to go at least 10, according to certain academic studies. So that's, that's problem. That's a problematic. And, you know, Putin's two greatest wef weapons are, uh, American impatience hmm. and American indifference. And I think we're, uh, unfortunately heading into a very difficult, difficult stretch for U.S. Ukrainian relations. You know, the thing is, and you're right, it has become a longer war than many anticipated. It also has become, because of that, a more, a more expensive endeavor, I think, than many Americans anticipated. But let me put on the screen the numbers behind that, and I want you to make the argument as best you can to people who look at these numbers. So the second screen we have is U.S. aid to Ukraine. So let me look at that first. So that's $44.5 billion in security assistance since January 21. All right, that's a lot of money. The next one we have is President Biden calling for more money to be added on top of that, okay? He wants $24 billion, including 17 billion for defense. So when people see numbers like that, they say, boy, I don't know. If, how, to your point, they know it's a long war already. And they say, well, how long can we keep doing this? And you say. I mean, the reality is it's a relatively small investment, particularly without the deployment of American forces in order to uh, uh, weaken and constrain Russia uh, and to prevent a Ukrainian collapse over time. Uh, most Americans, George Will, I think, said that uh, when it comes to foreign policy, Americans wanted li of little it, uh, of it as possible, and that's understandable. What happens, however, is that Americans take their cues from the political elites, and you now have a political system in which you have an, a binary political system, Republicans and Democrats. Right. You've got a high level of dysfunction in, in the Republican Party, and the louder the minority and they are minority, the louder the, the minority of Republicans who are who either don't want a blank check for Ukraine, understandable, or others who don't want any assistance at all, the louder they yell and scream, uh, I suspect the greater their impact is going to be on Americans who, to some degree, are taking their cues from the uh, channels they watch. Well the politicians yeah, they follow. No, I understand that. Not I, a good sign. Right. No, I, I would say it's the last thing then. What would you tell them? When, when is it going to change? For example, is there any sign that you know, President Zelensky might be open to some sort of a negotiation where any land would be given up? It doesn't seem like there is. But would no. it, so it doesn't seem like the status quo, the, the issue, the situation we're dealing with now would change anytime soon if that didn't happen, right? I think that's 100 percent correct. And you also have to be honest. And I think the, 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 you need a new set of talking points. Either the administration is going to make the case that this is not going to be over quickly, but it is in the vital national interest of the United States to continue supporting Ukraine, or the, the effort is going to bleed open. And we're going to be left in a situation where the war is going to continue. Uh, the Ukrainians will not be able to redeem most of their territory. Putin is interested in a long war because he, figure, he figures um, uh, our, our um, capacity, uh, political capacity to sustain this um, will not be sustainable. Uh, and in the end, I'm, I'm afraid that um, we aren't giving the Ukrainians uh, enough to win, presumably. Right. And uh, on the other yep. hand, we're, we're making sure they don't lose. And that may well be an untenable 
untenable political administration for this administration. Yeah, that's a good point because it keeps it going. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.